Yeah, j- just just hearing your story and 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 your ability to connect with your animals. I know there are so many people that a lot of people who listen to the podcast only have two or three animals, and that's kind of the way they like it. Or maybe maybe they only have one. I know there's a lot of people that listen to the show that just have a single animal, which I I love to hear those stories, and they want to have that bond with with their animal. But at the same time, they you know you you always hear the you know your animal will they will interact with you, but they don't like to interact with you and, and, and so on and so on. And, and of course there are elements of that if they, if you have not exposed them to you properly, but I think they're, so you, you are proof that they, they're, they're not, like you said, they're not going to see you like a, like a dog sees you, but they're going to see you as, okay, this is the human force in their life that allows them to get out and exercise and do other things. And they, they associate you with positive energy and positive experiences. And, and that's, a 100% not an unscientific thing to say and it's 100% something that's on the table for everybody who keeps a snake right well and here's the thing dude is that sometimes people will accuse me of using scent to lure out the snakes um like in some of those videos where i put my hand in there and mojo crawls up my arm or whatever but first off i would never (laughs) recommend using scents food scents to try to lure your snake because you're asking them to get bit, um, yeah. you know, onto your arm, right? Like if I were to take a rat and rub a dead rat up my arm to try to get him to, to go up my arm, that would be a terrible, terrible idea. I would not ever recommend. That. Um, second off, even if I did do that, his body language would be completely different, right? He totally. would be tense. His, his, his neck would be effed up. He'd be flicking his tongue really rapidly. Um, you know, you would see the body language of predation right? Or, or, or uh, that predator mode, rather. And so, you know, that's, that's one thing that, to keep in consideration is that I'm not using food to motivate these animals, right? It's literally just me interacting with them. Or the, when I'm talking about the snakes, of course, um, I'm not using food to, to interact with them. They don't get any treats. They don't, you know, I'm not doing target training or anything like that, which I'm, I don't have anything against, but I, I just don't do that, right? Um, and so, you know, there's, there's several factors in, in that the, the fact that you got to, um, when you're forming a bond, you know, you obviously like with some animals, like your dog or your cat, like offering them treats or like with the raccoons, like offering them treats is a great way to, uh, build that bond faster. But with a snake, I can't do that. Right. So really what I am offering them as far as um, what are they getting out of it? They're getting uh, interaction. They're getting, you know, stimulation. I'm taking them out of the enclosure, you know, putting them somewhere else, you know, and they're getting that interaction with that. That's not their enclosure. Um, Mm -hmm. Another thing, too, is that I think that we. We as people or as a culture, we like to assume um, the conscious or the, the level of intelligence that animals have and, um, and going back to the fish thing and, you know, whatever people thought that, you know, these animals are dumb, had no memory, um, you know, whatever. And now we're talking about the snakes and, you know, so many people think that they can't bond with a human being. Um, you know, that, that so many people think that you can't even cohab with them without them ripping each other apart. Right. But what I'm kind of trying to show is that there's a different element to them right like there's there's something a little deeper now i'm not going to say that you know snakes are going to start writing poetry or tax code or tell you what the meaning of irony is but there's certainly an intelligence and, and the ability to learn right if they can learn that i'm not a threat and then trust me that actually tells me a lot because i mean think about it from a wild animal standpoint which is basically what a baby boa constrictor is or a baby uh, Brazilian rainbow boa. It's, a, it's essentially a wild animal, right? Like it's, yeah. not, um, it's, not like bringing home, it's not like bringing home a puppy. And so when you first start interacting with that baby snake, you have to build its, the trust right away and let them know that you're not a threat, right? And so um, the ability for them to learn that such a large creature is not a threat you know what I mean? And then to be able to trust, um, or be, or at least be able to be comfortable. With, uh, it says a lot, you know what I mean? That tells me a lot about, uh, their abilities to learn their cognition. Um, 
sentient, stuff like that. I mean, because if you think about it from a survival standpoint, what small snake is going to crawl on the top of an animal that is a thousand times its size? Yeah, willingly. You know what I mean? Right. And, and I get, that's another thing I get too, is, that, oh, it's just crawling on you because it thinks you're a warm tree. It, it, yeah. it thinks I'm a warm tree. I've, I've gotten that before. And it's like, okay, so you're telling me that that snake's crawling on me and its sense of smell can't detect my heat or I can't, can't detect my odors. Its heat pits can't detect my heat, nor, nor its body detect my heat from touching me. And it can't feel my heartbeat or my breathing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it doesn't know that I'm a living thing. I, I don't think that's the case. You know what I mean? Like yeah. never, never have I ever seen, uh, you know, a, a garden snake crawl on top of my dog to get warm. Exactly. You know what I mean, yeah. Like my totally. dog will lay, well, my dog will lay outside in the, in the grass, and I've never seen a garden snake crawl on top of it to, you know, uh, thermal regulate. I've just never seen it. Um, so there's there's more of an element of. Um, I don't know what the, you know, I, I know I say bonding a lot, but it's like a, a relationship, right? Like there's an element of, um, they are seeking, right? Like they're seeking me. Like when I stick my hand in there, Mojo crawls onto me. It, it, he's making the choice to do that, right? Like yeah. I'm not pulling out of the cage and saying, hey, 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 we're going outside today. I put my hand in there and if he wants to come out, he comes out. And there, there are times where they don't. Right? Like I'll stick my hand in there and they, they don't want to come out, but that's also kind of goes to, you know, them being an individual and, you know, individuals have preferences at certain times, you know, like right now exactly. I don't want to go to work, <laughs> so I'm not going to go, <laughs> you know, but it's, it's the same, you know, it's the same kind of, kind of idea, you know, they, they do things on their terms. And as long as I respect that and I give them the opportunity to make that choice, then I'm giving them, um, I'm giving them the best opportunity that they can have. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and totally. as far as a relationship or some sort of a bond, um, you know what I mean? Like that's really the only kind of indicators you could have. Of it. You really can't have a situation where I'm pulling the snake out of the enclosure and then I say, Hey, look, he's bonded to me. He loves me. Well, how do I know that? You just pulled him out. Right. Yeah. Well, like if I, I, think I if it, I went up to a dog and and it, no, I'm, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, I, I think it's what it's very clear. Say? It's very clear that the they they clearly relate you to some positive experience. So whether the experience is actually interacting with you or the experience is something further than that, like maybe the 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 freedom of getting out of the enclosure, they know that you're linked with that in some capacity or that you're linked with potentially getting to go outside or even linked with food. There are so many different ways that they, they've linked you to a positive experience. Like I said, whether they see you as the positive experience or they see you as the pathway to the positive experience, it's still causing a bond between you and them and I think that's really beneficial and and just as you're talking it makes me think of you know if, if you if you take a domesticated animal like a dog or a cat they come out of the box totally fine with humans and they actually need to learn that humans are a danger and that's where you get into the, the stress animals or, or, or the the strays and the feral animals right those ones learn to eventually be afraid of humans where when we're dealing with reptiles it's and non-domesticated animals it's the opposite like they come out of the box being afraid of humans and they have to learn that humans right. are always danger or a, a, you know a danger to their to their well-being or their life and i think that's exactly what you've highlighted here Right. No, totally. And, and you're a hundred percent right because when they're born, their instincts are telling them that large creatures are going to hurt them. Yeah. Right. And, and that's actually pretty, it's pretty, a, a, a across the board for just about any kind of animal, because I mean, I think we I think a lot of times people, we forget our perspective because we are only, we only see one perspective, but we're big compared to a lot of creatures. Right? Like my oh, raccoon yeah. friends, like if I stand up too fast, like they get scared because I'm a big scary animal. 